Hello everyone and welcome to Tesla Ryan. If you're in the electric vehicle space in North America, you may know that there are two main level two connectors, the Tesla proprietary connector and the J1772 or type one connector. Without getting into the weeds too much here, Tesla developed the Tesla connector before releasing the 2012 Tesla Model S, which will be their first vehicle to feature the connector. At the time, a connector that did both level 2 charging and DC fast charging had not yet been established as a standard in North America. The decision fractured the EV charging space with these two connectors. Thankfully, since they both use the same communication protocol to talk to the vehicle, they can use adapters to connect the Tesla to J1772 and J1772 to Tesla. What you may not know is that for a brief time, Tesla actually sold a Tesla branded J1772 charger in the United States. After over a year of searching for one, I managed to find a brand new one for sale on eBay. Very little is documented for these wall connectors and I've not been able to find any videos of them online and scattered information at best. There are a few forum posts here and there and according to the seller on eBay, Tesla made these for commercial installation only and never made them available to the general public for purchase. Tesla has since discontinued these and now uses third-party J1772 chargers alongside of regular wall connectors for new installations instead. In the video today, I'm going to be unboxing the Tesla J1772 wall connector, looking for any differences between this and the standard Tesla wall connector, and seeing how it works. At first glance, I thought I had gotten ripped off as the box looks identical to a standard Tesla wall connector and even shows the regular connector on the end. Upon opening the box, the first indication that something is different is the installation manual which clearly shows the J1772 wall connector along with the odd 4O instead of 40 for the amperage, just like the regular wall connector. On the right side of the box, you get your standard installation material, the wall bracket, caps and screw plugs, screw kit, and the top fed spacer bracket. In the main compartment, you find the body of the wall connector with a 24-foot cord wrapped around. At the end of the cord, sure enough, is the J1772 connector. I've looked at the standard wall connector every day for years, so to see one with this connector and receptacle on the side is really quite odd. The connector is really solid and well built. It has a good heft to it, and the release bar on top actually appears to be aluminum. The electronics on the inside look mostly similar to the standard wall connector, with a few exceptions. The label at the top is different, as the standard wall connector includes rotary switch settings from 12 amps to 80 amps, where the J1772 is limited to 40 amps. The wiring to the connector is also different for the same reason. The wires are considerably thinner, as they only need to carry half of the maximum current of the standard wall connector. The only other functional difference I can see here is this blue wire. That wire is used for the button on the end of the Tesla connector that opens the charge port door. You can even see the wire that they've cut off right here. I'm gonna go ahead and pigtail this wall connector with a NEMA 1450 cord for a range. I had planned on doing a how-to video on this, but adding a cord to a hardwired appliance is against the National Electrical Code, so I'll only be doing this for temporary testing purposes. Now that we're all wired up and the wall connector is mounted, Time to flip the circuit breaker and see how it works. Before we power it on, we need to do the obligatory ASMR. We're waiting for a solid green light on the top to tell us that the wall connector is good to go. Great, all systems go. Now it's time to plug in our J1772 adapter and plug in our Tesla. Excellent, we're charging at the full 40 amps now. One last thing I wanted to test with this is the load sharing. 
which is a great option when you have more than one electric car that you need to charge on a regular basis. Essentially, the wall connectors communicate with each other over these wires and negotiate how much charge each car can have based on the total amount of the circuit that they're on. On the primary unit, this dial is set to position 8, 40 amps, which indicates that it and any other wall connectors will never draw more than 40 amps in total, whether operating solo or with multiple units charging at the same time. In my current setup, I have two Tesla wall connectors sharing a 40 amp breaker for our Model Y and our Model S. I would love to get this J1772 wall connector mounted outside of the garage for any guests that we may have with electric cars. That would mean that each vehicle would be able to charge at a minimum of around 13 amps if all three were charging at the same time. For now, I'm going to remove my silver primary wall connector from the setup and hook those existing communication wires that go to the matte black secondary wall connector to the J1772 wall connector. Now that we're all wired up, here's the moment of truth. And we've got an error message. Wall connectors display their errors in the number of blinks that this red light makes in a row. So it looks like we've got six blinks. That means circuit breaker sharing network. The networked wall connectors have different maximum current capabilities. Since the regular wall connectors have a maximum of 80 amps of current and the J1772 only has 40 amps, it looks like they're not able to be on the same load sharing network after all. If I want to install this on the outside of my garage, I may have to repurpose the wiring for my TT30 outlet or run a whole new circuit for this. So there you have it. A quick look at this weird but functional bit of Tesla history. I may include the J1772 wall connector alongside of the standard wall connector in my charging review series. I'm going to try to be more consistent with uploading content as well, and I'm going to cover some non-charging topics in the near future. As always, thanks so much for watching and have a great day.